Hey everyone, this is Martin from How to Make Mobile Games on YouTube. And today, let me check, I think it's the 7th of April 2014. So I did another video last night, so check that out guys if you are looking for new videos. I talk about some non-game related stuff in there like stress and so on. Um, but my internet connection today seems to be fairly stable right now, so I've got to grasp that opportunity while I have it and do some videos because uh, I'm really enjoying them. Um, but my wife just told me that the internet in the new apartment is going to be set up pretty soon. So fingers crossed that's going to be stable and faster because I really want to make these videos uh, higher quality. I checked the quality last night and it seemed a little bit... Um, it was blurry, but it was stable at least. But I, I want to be able to do high quality renders uh, or high, high quality broadcasts on this channel for sure so you guys can see uh, what's going on more clearly. So uh, this video today is going to be a fast one. I might broadcast a little bit more later uh, because I do have to pop out in a moment and uh, send this like banking form that I did before to arrange some kind of PIN and USB device from my bank. So um, anyway, but this video is a fast one. Someone had emailed me a, a question and I wanted to answer this. Is how do you do um, a finger offset or a delta position offset in, in a game? Uh, and what I mean by that is, for example, if I just grab my device here, uh, if you've got a, a character in the middle of the screen here, for example, right, and you want to move him, if you put your finger on him and you move him around, that's fine. That's really easy to do, OK? But what if you, uh, if the character is here and you put your finger down here and you want your character to move upwards relative to your finger, so the character stays here, your finger stays down here, and the character moves up uh, as you move your finger up, but the character stays in its position. It doesn't, you know, zip down to where you tapped your finger. Uh, and the same as well, if you move your finger to the left or right, whichever way this is, the character will also move in that direction. And if you move it, if the character is here and the finger is here, it will also it will also move um, you know in the same direction but with an offset, so it doesn't zip to the position of the finger. Let me illustrate this in the in the game, guys, and I'll show you in Unity, and I'll share my screen with you and show what I'm talking about, so you get to see a little bit of code. Hopefully, let me check. It's looks like you're seeing the screen here, so that's good. Yeah. So I've not actually played a Unity game on the channel before, so I'll try to... Hopefully this will come through okay. Um, but what you'll see here is we've got my main character in the middle, which is me, and these cookies at the, at the side that you've got to avoid, okay? So as soon as I click, I'm going to move and try and avoid, and I'll click directly on the character, okay? So pretty simple. You know, it, it gets kind of tough though because you've got to keep thinking ahead of where these guys are going to go and you've got to avoid them so it's ah okay it's it's diff more difficult than it looks all right but if i click on play again all right if i put my finger down here okay uh, or or mouse down here there you go you see the character move relative to the finger even though my finger or mouse was down here so it's you can tap anywhere on the screen, and this guy will just move relative to where the tap is, uh, a delta position or whatever we whatever we call it. Okay, so if I let go as well and I move up here, you can see my mouse is on the right, but it's still moving relative. It's not snapping to that position, and that's pretty useful because we started to do this in another game as well, and also this game. So what I found before is that often players, what will happen is if uh, the finger is directly over the character, like for example, if the if I have to put my finger directly on top of this character, I can't see the other characters because my hand is in the way. You know, my hand is covering up like this part of the screen here. But if I can put my finger down here and move around, then I can clearly see what's going on around the uh, what's going on around the screen. Okay, what other characters and objects are going on around the screen. So. How was this done? If I open up the script here, I just checked this before, just to kind of recap how it's going. Sorry, how it was done. And it's pretty simple. 
Uh, I, I, but it did, uh, it did take me a few minutes just to sort of calculate it in my brain. Uh, the first thing that I do is, is um, declare a variable here, a finger down offset vector 3. It can be vector 2, it doesn't have to be vector 3. All you need is the x and y. Um, but this is, this is the main thing that I needed here. And if I go down to the uh, update function, okay, when the mouse is held down on the screen or when the finger is pressed down on the screen, um, we do a standard thing, which is we do a, a, a raycast into the game world. And then if that raycast does hit something, like the tap detection plane, what we do then is this calculation here. We do finger down offset X is the, um, the position of the character minus the position of the finger tap. Okay, And the same for the Y offset. The, it becomes the position of the character minus the position of the finger tap. Okay, so let me, for example, if um, to get the finger down offset, let's say, for example, my character is in position. Um, let's say it's on the right hand side over here. Let's say it's position five. Okay, so the character is over here. It's position five. Okay, and my finger is in position three. Okay, so if the character is um, uh, position five minus the position of my finger, which would be three, which gives the finger down offset of two. Okay, um, so basically we're saying that the here this is correct that the character is going to be more to the right hand side, and the finger is going to be to the left hand side. Okay, then down when we want to move the character. All right, we're saying that the transform.position.x, this is the character position, is the position of the finger, okay, which was, we said two, did we? Did we say two? Yeah. Plus the finger offset, which was, uh, sorry, is that right? Uh, sorry, position of the finger, which is three, plus the position, which is two, okay? So that would give us five, which is what we said before, if the character was in position 5 over here. Let's do just look at that the other way around. Um, for example, if the, let's say now the character is position um, 1 and the hand is position 4, okay? So if we do it that way around, so if the character is position 1 minus um, 4, which would be minus 3, okay? And I'm trying to keep this all in my head here, guys. <laughs> it's getting confusing. So when we do the when we do the update, okay, when when we're trying to move the character, what we're doing we're saying is the character transform.position.x, which is the character position x, is the position of the finger, okay, which was oh god, what did we say? Raycast.point.x is um, ah, what did we say? It was four or one? Um, oh, I can't remember. All right, so let's just say raycast position. Uh, the the position of the finger was four, okay and um, plus the finger offset, and we calculated the finger offset to be minus 3, so that would result in the transform position being 1, which is correct. Yeah, we said, we said that the finger position would be 4 and the character position would be 1, okay? So I just wanted to go through an example there, guys. Um, and the same thing is calculated for the Y position as well, and this, this is just 2D. Um, this is a 2D game, so you notice that I'm just using the X and Y uh, of the vector three uh, variable up here, okay. I didn't use the the z element, okay. Uh, just so you know, guys, as well, I've explained this before, but the way that we move characters around the screen, very very simple, is in the uh, we declare a, a raycast, okay, and we all do also declare a raycast hit. A raycast hit is just so that you can can contain the information of the. Uh, what did this ray hit? The ray is like a laser. When you tap on the game screen, um, I'll just illustrate this on camera, if I can turn this off. Uh, a raycast basically is if you've got a device, if you tap on the screen, what it'll do is it'll shoot a laser into the game world. Okay, so it will say, okay, your finger is tapped here on, on the on pixel coordinates, and then it'll translate that tap into the game world because these are like, you know, this is like a pixel, pixel coordinate system. This is 0, this is 720, I think. This is 1, 2, 8, 0, I think. 
But those are not world coordinates. World coordinates like x, y, z inside of Unity, they need to be converted. So that's what a ray does, is it, is it, it shoots like a laser into the game world so that you, then you can see what that laser hit, okay? And that's what we're doing here, is we're basically, let me share my screen again. Uh, just check that you guys are seeing that, yeah. So that's what we're saying here, is create a laser, and then when it hits something, put that hit information inside of this raycast hit variable so that we can check what did it hit. Did it hit a cookie? Did it hit a tap detection? Did it hit a button or whatever, okay? So all we do inside of um, uh, get mouse button down is, this is in the update loop, by the way, get mouse button down is the it only gets called the first time that you tap the screen, get mouse button down. Uh, get mouse button uh, checks every single frame that the that the finger is held down on the screen. Okay, so um, all we do here is you just say, okay, if the if the finger is being held down on the screen or the mouse is being held down on the screen, this this detects uh, taps for mobile and also uh, mouse clicks. Okay, then when when the finger is down, do a raycast. That means shoot a laser into the game world. If if the raycast hits something, okay, then do this code, okay, and we can see here what we're doing is uh, physics.raycast says uh, test to see if this laser here, this ray two laser, hit something, and if it did, put that information into the raycast hit variable, and then what we can do is if this is true, if the hit did happen, if the tap did happen. Then we can calculate, you know, oh, okay, now we know where to move the trans now we know where to move the character to because we've there is a tap on the screen. Okay. And where do we move it to? We move it to this raycast position here because we've got the information inside. So we go point dot x, okay, so, which gives us the x and y information. And then that's how we can calculate the finger offset as well. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, you know, I think I hope that wasn't too uh, technical for this time in the morning. It's it's half eleven for me. I hope it was useful as well because I do want to talk about some code and things as I, as I do these videos, of course, uh, not just sort of general business topics, uh, but something that's really useful and concrete. And you guys can ask me again. Um, also, guys, uh, check out this game, please. Uh, it's called uh, Escape Cookie. I'll show you the menu screen so that you can see it. Okay. So there it is. It's called Escape Cookie. Can you run action game? It's on Android right now, guys. It's also on um, coming soon on to uh, iOS as well, and it's already on Amazon at the moment. And uh, I'll put a link in the description as well for you guys to see. And uh, but please check it out. Please let me know what you think of the game as well. It is a very simple game, uh, but it's also a lot of fun and it's very quick. Um, and those are the types of games that we make at the moment. Uh, FYI, as well, as I mentioned in the title of this video, the source code is also available uh, for sale. We're selling this source code for $80, and it's a little bit simpler than some of our other games. The Accelerate X project, that source code that we're selling is $100. Uh, this one is $80 because it's a little bit simpler. There's not quite as much content in there. Um, but uh, if anyone is interested in purchasing the source code, it what makes money through AdMob and it also makes money through Chartboost. So very easy to set up. You just need to change the artwork in the game. Uh, you don't need to do any coding. You just need to put your publisher IDs in the games. And uh, there's also a guide documentation of how to do that. Very, very simple. Uh, but once you do that, then you can build that for iPhone. And you can build also build that for iOS um, if you like. And then you can make money through Chartboost and AdMob. So that's available. If anyone is interested, you can send me some questions or you can, um, you know, uh, let me know what you think. If you send to martin at cobbleplay.com, or if you leave a, a comment in the description of this video, that's uh, that's the way that I can see uh, if you've got any questions. So, But anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to come back later. I'm going to do some more videos. Thank you for all the likes, comments, and subscribes. Please tap that like button down there below. Always helps. Two big thumbs up. And I'm going to be back later on doing some more videos. But have an awesome day, guys. I'm going to speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.